Warning, the following program contains adult language, adult themes, and spoilers. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to this week's episode of This Week's Episode. I'm your host, Angie Fernot. With me, as always, is Save Slave, Chris Randazzo. Agree to disagree. Fearless Shield Maiden, Karen Randazzo. Shame on anyone who doesn't get drunk. And Cleaver of Men, Evan Goldstein. Ritual sacrifice is not an exact science. This is episode number 242 for the week of December 9th. This month was my pick. I chose Norseman, season one, episode one, The Homecoming. Uh, but before we get into that, this is your weekly reminder that you can get in touch with us at mail at geekade.com. Are you watching anything new? Should your holiday dramas be a sitcom? Uh, do you want to tell us what to watch? Do you want to tell us about your holiday drama sitcom? We always want to hear from you. So please, pretty please, let us know you're there. So, uh, guys, how we doing? I'm doing pretty good. Yay. We're doing. We're doing. We're doing. I have this wonderful Dragon Ball art hanging over my TV right now, and it's just, it's making my ding-dang day. Why? I just Where did it. it come from? I got it. This I ordered, I, I must have talked about this on SAG, like, months ago. It just popped up as one of those random Facebook ads. Okay. Like, hey. <laughs> get this canvas of so, uh, this so you this... must have said dragon ball in the other room next yeah. to your phone <laughs> to somebody else's phone actually <laughs> and it so it shows up in my facebook as this really gorgeous picture and it's um one of my favorite things is nerdy stuff that you can't immediately tell is nerdy stuff you know like you look at it and say oh that's a really pretty picture but if you know then you know and it's just this gorgeous painting of a of of a scene from dragon ball and um, it uh, was a, a canvas thing, and I was like, "All right, it's a little pricey, but I really, really like this, and it would go perfectly over, like, over the TV." So I ordered it, and then the company that I ordered it from disappeared. <laughs> so sounds about right. It, it was a little while, and I couldn't find. Like, it was not showing up in the mail, and my tracking was like not giving me any information so i tried to you know go to the website and it was gone it's like cool so they just stole my money that's never going to happen but then like a week later it showed up at my door it's like all right this is fantastic except it's it's smaller than i expected and i don't mean that the image is smaller i meant it came in a tube oh in the pictures it was like a canvas on a you know on a wood frame mm -hmm. this was just the canvas in a tube yeah, it sounds about right. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Well, crap. All right, fine. <laughs> uh, fortunately, my brother-in-law is like knows how to do custom framing and all that stuff. So I gave it to him to build a frame for me. Uh, and so he said, you know, sure, no problem. He was going to stretch it over a frame. But as he was building the frame, he ran out of staples. Oh, so Christ. he asked if I had a, a staple gun on when he was coming down for Thanksgiving. So I had to like run out on Thanksgiving to borrow a staple gun because I don't have a staple gun and the right kind of staples. And then we, we fixed it together on Thanksgiving and we hung it up and now it is sitting up there on a, on a wood frame, just the canvas on a frame and it looks nice. Uh, and it's just this wonderful picture of Kame house with a little kid Goku on, on Nimbus flying towards it. But like, Aww. again, if you don't, if you don't know what it is, you'd, here, I'll I'll snap a picture and throw it in the chat for you guys to see. Nice. But it is a it's really nice. <clears throat> it's been up there since Thanksgiving and it's just it's just a treasure. Fantastic. Oh, you're a treasure. That's a win. Very good. It is. It is a genuine win. I am a I am super fond of it. Let's see here. There <laughs> we go. So, it's funny that you mentioned that like you ordered something and then it, it you know vanishes. I had ordered at <laughs> least I know it's going. Two sets of like uh silicone wedding bands and the first one the first 
batch um never showed up and then uh, amazon's like hey we know it's late uh give it another day and then if they still don't get it you can you know ask for a refund so i give it another two days being nice because the shipping said it was just on a ups truck somewhere or you know a post office truck somewhere we can't find it so i got my refund i ordered them again i reordered them from a different company same shit happened then angela ordered a pair or a set same shit happened so we just gave up on ordering them from amazon and ended up at like walmart and they had like a pack of four for like five bucks i'm like this is good enough i just need to wear something at work because yeah i buy the ones from walmart come home the next day from work if i'm not mistaken and this mysterious package shows up yes yes that's it was much the how first it order of rings uh-huh. <laughs> that i had purchased which i now have four extra rings for free because they gave me a refund already three <laughs> weeks earlier <laughs> fucking mandarin over here (laughs) (laughs) what was funny about it though is that like i had ordered a set of rings at the same time and the second time that the rings were ordered for him on amazon i did the ordering and i was like well i'm already ordering you know silicone rings for myself so no big deal whatever like i'll just i'll order them and and you know maybe i'll have better luck because the universe doesn't hate me um (laughs) yeah that that was the set that came eventually but like my rings showed up early actually like yeah she finished like she hit submit and the doorbell rang like that's how fast they showed up it was great i was like thanks universe and then like a bird landed on my finger and there were butterflies in the packaging it's great (sighs) love you oh to be you yeah (laughs) yeah so Oh, uh, it's okay. It's a Christmas miracle, honey. You got him. I, it's true. It's a Christmas <laughs> miracle. We'll just call it that. Yeah. Oh, wait till you guys see our Christmas card this year. I'm so excited. <laughs> okay. A, I am too. It was a group effort. It was a group effort. effort. It was Evan's idea with some modifications for me. <laughs> uh, so anyway, all right, let's talk about television. Uh, Karen, because I never yeah. hear you go first. I want you to go first. Tell me, okay. what have you been watching? Um, Not a whole lot well, what um, the fuck karen <laughs> i well i have some things okay, okay cool. relax cool cool um i you can live <laughs> I to live how nice for me i finished the current season of great british baking show oh nice um very sweet and comforting and so now even though i realized later that i should have done something else that i didn't do yet but i will um i had turned to just like the Christmas versions of Great British Baking Show, which I haven't watched before. Okay. So I, I've seen a couple of those. Um, and that's kind of fun because it's going back in time to older hosts that, you know, haven't seen in a while. Right. Um, and then my, you know, I continue to be, t- t- <laughs> I was continuing with my um, Doctor Who rewatch while I'm working. And I got through season six, which is great. Um, <laughs> I, I remember. That was convincing. No, yeah. well, I mean, so here I'm trying to form my thoughts. Is the problem? Um, there was, there was a, when season six came out, and it was like the first time they had done a full season overarching story, mm-hmm. and everyone was like. <clears throat> this is crazy it doesn't make any sense it's like this is so convoluted i don't know what's going on i hate it and like looking back it makes so much more sense than what's going on in doctor who right <laughs> now just, so which one which one is that that you're talking about what's, that's what's the, the one story? with the um, the silence and amy has the baby and then the baby grows up to be river Oh, yeah. I mean, that was a little convoluted, but it made sense. But it did make sense. And but it paid s- off. Right. And you, But some people hated it, despite, yeah, well, like, they just suck. weren't, their brains weren't, you know, they weren't galaxy-brained enough to get it or something. I don't know. Or maybe it so, just wasn't that well written. Oh, no, it was, yeah, oh no, I come dug it. on. <laughs> I actually don't anyway. remember it. <laughs> Um, so I got through that and then I started season seven, which is the end of the Amy and Rory era. Okay. And I got to the episode before 
their last episode. And I was like, I don't want to watch this. Oh. I don't want to watch what happens to them. Yeah. And then I realized I was an adult and I don't have to watch things I don't want to watch. So I stopped watching season seven and switched over to Doctor Who Christmas specials because it's Christmas time and I'm a grown up. And if I don't want to watch something that's going to make me sad, I don't have to watch it. If I don't want to, kind of, I don't have to. I love that. Didn't they kind of live happily ever they after? They kind though? of did. Kinda. But the, it was just that episode was so sad wasn't that yeah, like the I, weeping angels were about to yeah. catch them oh man that was so good they though. did catch they them did and catch then they them did yeah time. but they lived then, they lived in the past like yeah i remember they lived that. in the past they were together mm-hmm. it was all fine but the episode was so sad and i was mm-hmm. just like i don't i don't have it in me so i'm not doing it so i, I switched angels. to watching Doctor Who Christmas specials was just working out great for me. Cool. Um, and just, it's been a lot of Doctor Who because the a current season or you know, event, that's what they were calling it, a, a six episode event uh, just wrapped up this week. Oh. I have no idea what the fuck happened. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I could not tell you a goddamn thing. I mean, it just... There was like a shit ton of characters, a shit ton of plot lines. At one point, the doctor split herself into three versions of herself. Cool. So that she could like be in three places at once and like solve shit. This is what I'm talking about when I say like, you people hated season six. This flux nonsense. I have no idea what's going on. I will never say a bad word against Doctor Who. I'm not saying it was bad. I'm not saying I hated it. I'm not saying anything like that. I'm just saying like I I, I was totally lost. I'm not I will say actually it was go garbage. so far to say, and I, I said this to Dan on, on Stone Age Gamer, this was the most enjoyable I felt that Doctor Who's been for quite some time. Um the the only problem was is that like they really bit off more than they could chew. Like the whole th- her being split into three, I thought that was like s- something that happened to her, right? Or did she do that on purpose? I felt like she did that on purpose. Oh shit! No, I completely mis- misinterpreted <laughs> that. Maybe <laughs> not. I don't know. But that's what we're talking about. It's like oh, you don't even it, know. It's, it's, it was nuts, and they like there was these characters that showed up, and they, they just kept introducing more characters and piling more characters on, and then they'd be like. Well, like seventy percent of them actually paid off. Like <laughs> some would be like, "Well, what was the point of this guy?" I really this is wh- what was the point of this? You didn't have to introduce this character. You had plenty going on. What are you doing? But uh, I I do think that it was the most fun the show's been in 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 a while. Um, it was genuinely entertaining. I was yeah. They definitely threw in a lot of like watchability for to get you through all this nonsense oh, yeah it was it good. was a good time it was you know it, it it had its problems but uh you know it was it was overall i'd say a pretty good time um that's you know. like i said last week i think being able to rewatch it all in a all in one go will mm. vastly help because it was just there was there was too much going on not to consume it as a whole um, now, do you know how much is left? Of what? Of like uh, this Jody? Yeah, she has one more season. So there's another season coming. Yeah, New Year's special, and then next year she's doing one more season. Okay. Um. Yeah, and we got to see Kate Stewart, so that was good. I like her. Um, I like the new companions. There's plenty of like about this most recent thing that they did. I just, I want to watch it again, like, when I get there. Um, But that's about it for me and things that I watched on my own or things that are my things, honey. (laughs) All right. What do you got, Chris? Me? Well, I have had quite a good time here. Um, So (laughs) in my, in the interest of just, you know, festivities and it being that time of year, I have, uh, been, I went through the Dragon Ball Z abridged uh, Christmas specials, which awesome. are just just very entertaining. Um, <clears throat> they threw in this whole bit where Goku is just like a fanatic about Christmas and Santa Claus, and uh, I mean like, there was out. there was one of them that was uh, it wasn't actually a Christmas special at all, but like the villain shows up and 
starts like freezing the planet or whatever. And when Goku wakes up, everything's frozen. And they're like, oh, are you okay? And he's like, it's Christmas! <laughs> and so, like, they convince him that he's strong enough to beat the bad guy by telling him he's champion Christmas. And he, <laughs> he like, powers up to this crazy degree. He's like, I am champion Christmas! I will not let you ruin the holidays! And, and the guy's just like, it's not Christmas, it's July! <laughs> <laughs> you idiot, I froze your planet! And then he got all sad and he beat the crap out of him. But it was, it was a good time. So there's like three Christmas specials for Dragon Ball, and they're they're pretty good. So that was fun. I love that. Uh, <laughs> over my lunch breaks this past week, I watched the remainder of uh, Masters of the Universe Revelation. Oh, yes! Sorry, I forgot how we started to talking about this yesterday, and we stopped because of Dan, but now yeah. we don't have to stop. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Mark Hamill is a... I mean, I, I give this man an award. Like, is there a, a, a category for ham? Because if there is, this man deserves all of the awards. I was explaining to Karen when I watched the first, like, two episodes. Like, his Skeletor makes his Joker seem tame. Yeah. Yep. It was yep. amazing. Like, for no other reason. I, I Any, wish. If you've no connection to Master of the Universe at all, it doesn't matter. Anyone should just watch a scene or two of Mark Hamill just devouring the scenery <laughs> as freaking Skeletor. That's actually what I did. Yeah. What's, what's funny is that I said this last night, I've never actually seen a cartoon character <laughs> choose scenery. Choose because scenery. Like, it's, like, that's an active choice. You have to like really think that out, plan it out, and then draw it. And God bless him, it was amazing. Yeah. And like not just the, that that was great, but also just the back half was such a payoff for the setup of the first half. Yeah. Which was like anybody could have seen this coming. Like you knew from the get go that they hired Mark Hamill to be Skeletor. And they didn't just hire him to do like four or five lines on a flashback or two. Like you knew the second half of the series was gonna be like Skeletor heavy and like He Man was gonna come back because that's that's the way it works. But like everyone was so pissed at the show for being like, oh, Tila's the main character, no He Man in the He Man show. It's, like, it's not called He Man, it's called Master of the Universe, you dolt. Whatever. Uh, <laughs> so, ah, good times, man. They, they, they kicked off this second half of the season with the whole like, you know, the sword was always just a conduit, but I had the power. And Skeletor's like, what are you, talk what are you talking about? And so he calls down the power without the sword and basically turns into the Hulk <laughs> with super speed, which was freaking crazy. Oh, it was, was so, so much, much fun. growling. Like, there was a lot of growling in that episode. There was. The thing that really, like, threw me off, though, was his freaking speed. Because, like, he's he's doing Hulk stuff, but then all of a sudden he's, like, as fast as the Flash, and I'm like, whoa, shit, this guy's intimidating. <laughs> and like, you know, and then he hugs his dad and everything, and I was like, oh, that's really sweet. And there was, there were so many great moments. So, and Fisto. <laughs> okay, hold on. Before we get to Fisto, um, there was a lot. There was a lot of <laughs> Kevin Smith. Like, I'm a Kevin Smith fan, and I could see the specific points where he went, "I'm doing this for my fans." One of which was. The scene in which Evil Lynn seduces Skeletor on the throne. And I'm yeah. like, holy <laughs> shit, they're actually doing this. They're gonna do it. And they did. <laughs> oh. oh, Skeletor thinking with that his little Skeletor. Was, <laughs> that scene was great because she was, I mean, she was fantastic. Uh, yeah. What's her name? Lena Headey. Yeah. She was so good in this show. And, like, that scene was just hilarious, because, like, it yeah. was so obvious, and Skeletor's just like, yeah, <laughs> and she's just, Not like, about time. grabs, All right. <laughs> just gets on top of him, grabs the sword, and is like, you are such an idiot, I can't believe you fell for that, no, I can believe you fell for that, because you're such a fucking idiot. <laughs> And then Evelyn gets the power, and then you've got three super-powered nut jobs. Oh, God, it was... 
so much fun. So it was our, so much fun. Our friend Chris Campana is a huge Masters of the Universe and He Man fan. Like he draw, he's an artist. He draws a lot of '80s cartoon characters, and he's known for drawing Masters of the Universe. And as I'm watching this, and I finished it, I I, I immediately sent him a message going, "Dude, Dark Lynn." Though, I think that's what I called her because, you know, in that last couple of episodes, I think they were just tossing around the power to everybody just to give them a new costume. And (laughs) they were fantastic. So I was like, I say what you need to do for your next print or whatnot is just everybody that that took the power, just make them a new like just like a lineup because their their character Right, it's like a was, montage. Was fantastic. Like they were so well done. It mm. it's taking what originally was and adding just just enough to make it modern, but not going way out of you know way out of bounds with it. So yeah, because it was still very much in that original style. You know, right. like it was a hundred percent still eighties He Man. Mm-hmm. But uh, it was it was it was really fun. Yeah. I, I had a I had a ball watching this. Like that was just a really good time. So with with that being said, yes, um, I had told you guys that Ralph Garman, who is friend of Kevin Smith, they do podcasts together. He did do a couple of voices, if I'm not mistaken. One being Fisto, which in the <laughs> Masters of the Universe <laughs> world is a just a regular. I think he's a redheaded, bearded dude, and he has big metal fists. And they actually said the line, I want to fist that guy. <laughs> yeah, Got away really, with that. They really freaking went there with him, and I could not have been happier. <laughs> I, uh, that was the only point in time I, like, I put my head down. I went, oh, Kevin, you didn't have to do that. You didn't have yeah, to. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he did. He 100% did. <laughs> oh, Kevin, you wanted to fist that guy. <laughs> he said it. And only Ralph Garman could have pulled that off. But it was, yeah, it was great. Um, fucking man in arms just stuck in my head who at the like second to last episode um the jumpy dude shows up oh god i don't remember any of these characters names (sighs) he has springs for legs and that was the only character for the entirety (laughs) of the show that i he wasn't in and i I, like i'd forgotten because he was always one of my favorite characters and it's just you, you loved him so much you forgot him because man in arms is stuck in my head for for something right now it'll pop in later but as I'm sitting there watching it, it, it all of a sudden he becomes like a human missile. And I was like, yes, yes, that's for me. Thank you, Masters of the Universe. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, good times. <sighs> yeah. yeah, no, this was really fun. It really paid off um, you know, everything that they set up in the first half. Left it open for another another season, which would be interesting. Yeah, uh, bringing definitely. bringing in Hordak at the end—that's kind of an interesting, uh, interesting thing. I'd like to see that that come to fruition. I don't know. I'd I'd watch more. It was a. Uh, I used to love this show when I was a kid. I'm not. It's not the kind of thing that I ever really thought I would go back to. Um, it's but very they surprising. did. A, they did a really good job with it. They did a really good job of making it feel making it feel modern. You know, it was a. Uh, very Orko, impressed. Man, like they they took Orko to a whole new level. Oh, Orko, that made me so happy because Orko was my favorite as a kid and when they killed him off, I was like, "Oh, that's a bummer, but I didn't see a body, so maybe he'll be back." And mm-hmm. then like the trailer for this season came out and I heard his voice. I was like, "Oh man, he's going to come back cuz they finally made him like powerful. Like they they fleshed out his character or whatever and i was like oh man i want to see i want to see what full powered orko is and then he came back and then he was gonna die again i was like oh come on show don't do that and then then lynn just kind of like caught him yeah (laughs) that 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 was interesting he's like well i'm being called back to the afterlife now and she's just like nah (laughs) and not like with any kind of mysticism or anything she just like grabs his coat and just like no you're good dude i got you like (laughs) nobody else would have done that like everybody else is all like oh orko please don't don't go it's so sad and she's the only one who's just like just grabs him and says well then just don't you don't <laughs> oh, have to okay <laughs> it's really silly but whatever <laughs> no nah, man i like i liked it a lot it was a lot of fun 
that was that was i'm so glad we that happened hey <laughs> yeah hooray for, hooray for socks uh, okay <laughs> uh and the other let's see we finished lock and key oh well, yeah I forgot that was that. uh that was awesome um really liked uh shit now I'm tr- oh okay so man they finished off in a really interesting position um that's what she said <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> like they really closed the book on the the Dodge character, okay. which I was like, "All right, so I guess they're I guess they're ending this show." But this other ones, this other demon's still out there, and they do the little epilogue with the other demon, and I was like, "Oh, this is what you're doing." Oh, okay. Well, it's gonna be interesting to see the dynamic between these two. Oh, never mind. She's dead. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And like. Here's okay, so proper villain set up for another season. I hope it comes to fruition. Uh, but yeah, it all that 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 finished out really, really well and really fun. I'm really happy with the way that show's going. Uh, yeah, I, I, I also enjoyed it. <laughs> okay, I guess what now is now is the time when we should probably watch it. We still I haven't started it and give it a whirl. Yeah, I mean, yeah. like I'm, I'm aware, I'm aware at this point that they're not following the comic. Like they're not. Yeah, I think at this point it's just like the comic is like somewhere way over there. This, yeah. this is alternate reality completely at this point. So, so at this point now, I can stop being on a freaking high horse, you know, and take get a on, step down. Get on your your low horse and just enjoy on, it with the rest of us. Get on a pedestal, <laughs> but not on a horse. There you go. No, it's, it it it's a good time. It's a good show. Really liked it. Uh, and then once we had finished that, we plowed through Cowboy Bebop, which I have a lot of complicated thoughts on. <laughs> oh, okay. Wait, I want to know where do you stand on the Ed thing? I don't know yet. Okay. I, I I don't I don't think I I don't think I like it, but I think I also need to see more of it. Okay. Because it, it was so short. Mm-hmm. There is like very very little. And it was, it was too literal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Like, that's not, did you guys finish it? No. No, but I, because I'm that person, have been looking at anything and everything I see that comes out, like, news-wise. Mm-hmm. Um, and if I think it's worth reading, I'll read it. And for the most part, everything I see, I'm like, eh, okay, this is whatever. But when I saw reporting coming out about ed i wanted to know because the pictures that i had seen i really did not like um yeah that's uh yeah and so i had also seen those pictures beforehand and i was like i really want to see this in context right because this shows this shows something and (laughs) so then i saw it in context and i was like i need to see that again in context more context yeah i've only watched it once like in context but it's like i'm looking at it like you you did you went a hundred percent literal and it was like uncanny valley well it doesn't work so (laughs) this is what this is like when i first saw that imagery what what clicked in my heart was i've had already seen one or two episodes of the show and i'm like they are redoing a cartoon but they're not making in a cartoon they're not like being cartoony about it mm-hmm. even though it is stylized and you know it's not like the most serious of shows but it's not it's not making fun of itself and then that imagery came out of ed and i was like they went full cartoon which is not it's not fitting the theme of the show i guess like it just it felt uh, it's off yeah it, it it's it's definitely not right so here's the thing. I, I have a lot of, I have, I have, like I said, I have a lot of complicated feelings about this show. On one hand, it's um, the the main cast, most of the cast is fantastic. Yeah, everybody who isn't, I said this when we watched it. Everyone who isn't vicious and Julia is great in this. <laughs> yeah, this is almost verbatim what the article said. So, yeah, <laughs> and like. That's that's great. So anytime you're we're watching the show and it's Jet, Spike, Faye, whatever, that's that's great. That's 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 a lot of fun. It's not perfect, 
and it still has this this overarching sense of pointlessness to it. But it's so much fun to watch that at least at least there's that. Like mm-hmm. I'm ne- I don't ever have to go back and watch this again. It is it really has nothing on the anime even at its best, but I understand like at least the kind of point to seeing like this is kind of neat seeing this play out in live action. I I don't think it needed to happen, but at least it's kind of neat and it's very entertaining. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There that's was fair. a fundamental misunderstanding though, or at least a fundamental change that I think really really got to me by the end because th- the end of this show was so full of this was that the original show was about those three characters well you know ed spike uh, uh, J- uh okay. jet spike Faye, ed and ein like mm-hmm. them living on the bebop was what the show was about and their week-to-week activities their existence you know right. and kind of like finding out more about them was what the show was about. The v- Spike's past was a thing that was always happening in the background. It was always there off in the distance, mm-hmm. and it occasionally reared its head and was like, oh, shit, this is, this is a big deal. But then it would go away. And it was like, you'd always know it's there, and you always know that it's going to come back to bite him. But it was just a background thing. So this- when it actually showed up, it had like this weight because it had weight to spike, not because it had weight to you because you know and care about these other characters, but the it was given weight because it meant so much to spike. Mm-hmm. This show is about Spike, Vicious, and Julia. That's the point of the show because everything that they do, every one shot episode that they you know turned into an episode of the live action show, they tied into Vicious and the Syndicate. Like, the drug dealers in the first episode that were dealing with Red Eye, well, that was Vicious's Red Eye. Frickin' Piero LeFou was hired by Vicious to kill Spike. Like, everything was tied to, to Vicious and Julia and the Syndicate. And it was gross, because... Now, if you're going to do something like that to try to add this connective tissue, I'm not against that in theory. But the syndicate stuff was awful. The They put all this extra time into Julia and Vicious, who were kind of nothing characters in the original series because you barely saw them. So they fleshed them out, but they did it in these... I do not understand the casting for Vicious. I do not understand the direction that they took that character in, because in the anime, he was like, pretty quiet. He was always like, he was always calm and collected, except for occasionally when he was fighting Spike. But like, this dude had his shit together. And that's what made him so scary. He was generic scary anime villain guy. And he was completely two-dimensional, but, like, that was kind of the point of him. And in this, they made him this unhinged child that was just constantly angry and... (laughs) Daddy issues. Daddy issues, just... There was no redeeming qualities to this character. Now, I'm not saying that the original Vicious had redeeming qualities as in, like, you could be redeemed as a good guy, but I mean, like, I understood why he was where he was in the world because he was really good at what he did. Mm-hmm. He he and Spike were like some of the best fighters, period. So of course, Vicious is an extremely good assassin. So that that's his that's his existence. He 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 has explained all he needs to be explained in this show. I could never believe that he was not dead a hundred times over. <laughs> I don't care if they made his dad like the head elder, like we need that shoehorned in there, whatever. But even with that being the case, the show even the, the show itself is like, he wouldn't give two shits about killing his son, especially because he's such a fuck up. <laughs> and like, that was the thing. Vicious was a complete fuck up. So the fact that he's married to Julia makes no sense to me because in what reality would Julia have married this fucking psychopath 
this this whiny idiot like <laughs> it, it made no sense i saw no chemistry or connection or reason she would ever marry this guy let alone even date him like she kind of did in the show like i almost bought that but to go through and marry the guy makes zero sense to me at all and the, the fact that he even has the job that he has like nepotism nepotism can only go so far when your dad doesn't even like you <laughs> and like just, the character was awful it was dreadful he was there was no joy watching him it was just puke and then there's Julia. Now, the whole time I'm watching this show, I'm looking at Julia like, why is she why is she acting like this? Like she's one of them. She's in the syndicate. She's a she's a damn good assassin by herself. Why is she acting like this? She always seems so scared. And then they did her backstory and they totally changed Julia's backstory to where She's not in the syndicate. She's not an assassin. She's a damsel in distress. No. They took somebody who was a, a like certified a badass. Freaking, she was a certified badass. She saves Faye at the end of the original series, and they turned her into a damsel in distress. She had no abilities at all. She was a singer, and that was it. A singer who got her break by mistake. Yes, she got her big break by mistake. And like, and then they do this weird, sorry, spoilers uh, for anybody who's, who cares. But at the, the last moment of the last episode, they do this ridiculous fucking heel turn for her where she turns on Spike and she kidnaps Vicious and basically like decides she's going to take over the syndicate. With no skill, no anything. It was like Anakin turning to the dark side in Revenge of the Sith. It's just like, nah, fuck it, I'm evil now. Uh, okay. <laughs> Literally. Maybe yeah. she's got daddy issues too. We'll get her a stripper pole. And like, she said something to Spike that I totally... I, I, I had so many problems with it because they could have they could have run with that angle and done something different with it. Because she said she says to Spike, why? So you were alive this whole time. Why didn't you ever come for me? And I'm like, well, first off, this would never have been an issue because he he never came for Julia in the original show because Julia didn't need anyone to come for her. Right. She was where she felt she needed to be. But in this show, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. Why didn't Spike come for her? That makes no fucking sense within the confines of this show. <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't Spike have ever come for her? And uh, oh, so angry about it. Did they well, have an Vicious, explanation? They just said that uh, he told Spike that Julia chose him. That Julia chose Vicious. Yeah. So, but then in the brain scratch fake episode, the whole time he's talking about, no, I'll never let you go. Even when she's saying to his face, no, no, I would never go back with you. Fucking leave me. He refused to say no, not without you. So you're right. It doesn't hope. make any sense. I just I I was confused a little bit by the explanation that they did offer. Mm. And do you bring me to another point with like some of the some of the changes that they made uh, from the original show? And I'm getting back. I'm looping this around to the Ed thing. Okay. I promise. Some of the changes that they made were like pretty confusing as to why they bothered making them like jet's got a kid now and matt much thinks that they gave jet a kid to make the character more relatable which okay but i mean did that need to happen like was jet not relatable before because i kind of feel like he was perfectly formed before and it didn't really change his character it just had a different thing for the character to do i don't know that bothered me but then you've got like there was an episode called Brain Scratch, which was about um, the uh, the cult that was trying to convince people to digitize their personalities. Right. And there was the big stack of TVs, and they kept showing that imagery on the trailers and stuff. And mm -hmm. so, <clears throat> in the original show, it was it was a pretty cool ending to that story. That the whole thing, the character of Londis, was created by this kid who used to be a hacker, but then he had some like incurable disease 
and his body stopped working and he was in a coma and like he kind of subconsciously created this person this al- alternate fake personality and created a cult because and as like they're figuring it out and he's being unplugged from this like thing that's creating that that character he's saying like if my body doesn't work doesn't work nobody should and like that was that that villain's motivation it was really kind of fascinating and then they arrested him and ed was like well this time i hope you have good dreams instead of you know because the kid like went to a coma and just had nothing but bad dreams and mm-hmm. started this whole cult and stuff it was, it was crazy but it was really interesting and in this one it was just like spike goes in to find Londis, and he goes into the the computer world and gets trapped just like in the show well no Faye's the one who gets sucked in in the show and then like it was just like ah oh, this dude walks in and he's like hey I made this AI it went nuts we gotta turn it off <laughs> oh that's the story <laughs> that's what you got like you had this interesting thing that wasn't anime right that that didn't work because it was a cartoon that could have translated just fine and they said, no, nah, fuck it, let's go with this. Because this is way dumber. <laughs> they totally skipped my favorite episode, which was um, a good long while ago, uh, years ago, it was the episode I had us watch for this show, I think, which was Speak Like a Child, which is the episode where uh, Spike and Jet go to Earth to find um, a VCR. Mm, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that was the episode that I chose for us to watch a long time ago. I don't remember; it was ages ago. But it's my favorite episode of the of the series, and I was really hoping that they would do it because the best part of this live action show is the chemistry between these actors, Jet and Spike in particular, are so good together. <laughs> so them going on a trip to to Earth to try to find a VCR would have been amazing. And like the point of it is, like Faye has no memory. And then in the beginning of the episode, this delivery service drops off a VHS tape, and no, nobody knows what the hell it is. They're like, what is this thing? And then Ed's like, oh, that's a, that's a VHS tape. you got to find a VCR to play that. And so they go out and try to fa- find what a VCR is, and they find out that the only VCRs left are probably on Earth, which is like in shambles. So they go on this like crazy life threatening expedition to find a fucking VCR. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. And then they come back with a beta player. <laughs> <laughs> and then the next day they deliver like the same delivery service just mysteriously shows up with a VCR and she watches the tape that had somebody had been trying to deliver to her for ages and eventually tracked her down. And it was just a VHS tape of her as a kid. Mm-hmm. Where in this one she found the tape from another whole mess of a character that they completely changed from the show. And then she brought it back to the ship and like jet just had a VCR on the, on the ship. And so they watched it. It's like, but why the hell? <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, and then the, the, the tape itself was like almost word for word. That was pretty wild. Like they had a little kid do the exactly what they did on the tape in the original anime. And that was almost spot on, which was pretty crazy. It's and so then there was weird, the choices like a, that they're making. Like the choices something. they're making. They ju- what did they do to Ayn? I was so upset with what they did to Ayn. Wait, well, the dogs, what did they do to Ayn? He's not a data dog anymore. They tied Ayn to Piero LeFou. Do you remember that episode? The big fat guy that was like was flying around basically invincible I, and he I was in the circus. It. I don't think I don't it was think a really memorable, it. creepy episode. Yes. I remember they tied, I Angela seen it, yeah. so it this is not gonna have the, the same power. Um because I okay. is the character like you know visually. There is so <laughs> much interesting character depth to that dog. Yeah, like he's 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 a really cool thing and he's a data dog. But in the show, he's like some person's mind was put into the dog or something like that. And what made Piero the Fou so fascinating in the original one, and they actually go on this whole, like, when they figure out who he is, they go on this whole uh, talk about what makes him so scary is that he's basically like a four-year-old. He's like an angry, angry four-year-old <laughs> with unlimited power. And that made him terrifying because he was basically invincible and super destructive. 
So And four year olds have like no moral compass. No moral <laughs> compass and are prone to fucking temper tantrums. Yep. And that's what made him scary. So in this show, they bust this super beefy dude out of jail who's just kind of crazy, but he has like he can talk. Like he's got a, he's 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 a dude and he's like talking and stuff. And that's Piero LeFou in this one. And he in the original one, the LeFou was scared of cats because there was a cat nearby always watching while they were doing the experiments on him. In this one, he's afraid of dogs because there was a whole bunch of other dogs with this weird brain surgery thing going on in the same place that he was being experimented on. So he's afraid of dogs. And so he's afraid of Ein, but he also was able to link up to Ein with his like wrist communicator and then like they shot some sort of holographic image out of Ein's eyes on the ship and LeFou showed up and was saying that Vicious hired me to kill you and I'm gonna kill you and you're gonna come to this place and I'm gonna kill you and all this stuff and I'm like what the fuck are you doing <laughs> first off why did you make Ein into like a tool for the bad guys. Like, it's the fucking dog. What are you doing? <laughs> and why is this guy talking and shit? And so they wind up ending the fight the same way they do in the cartoon, which had so much weight to it because, like, he has this force field, and the only way to get through it is to, like, get a knife through it. And Spike eventually stabs him in the leg, and he starts crying and asking for his mommy because he's a fucking child. <laughs> and in this one, he stabs him, and he has the same reaction. It's like, but this was a big fucking tough guy and now he's like hysterically crying like a baby and then floating away so what it misses you doing? all of its context yeah. It, yeah it just negates everything that made it special in the first place and then they like just dropped Ayn in the middle of nowhere because it's like get this fucking dog off my ship because they don't trust the dog anymore and like even when they first get Ayn the, the whole reason they wound up sticking with Ayn was because he was worthless. Like the guy who stole him was trying to sell him and they, they talked to the lady, uh the, the, the pet shop lady and, and she's like, I can give you two for it. It's like what, two hundred? No, two, two woolongs. It's just a Welsh Corgi. <laughs> and and in this one that. they were like, Oh, we should sell him. These dogs are you you never see real dogs. You'd never see them around. And like that was a weird change, but okay. I don't know, man. It got a lot of stuff right, and its heart was in the right place in a lot of really important ways. But they dropped the ball big time, especially in the last two episodes, which were all Vicious and Julia stuff, because they made it that the show was about them. And, like, they they kind of went a direction with the grand character, who was a, um... It was... It was always left pretty vague in the original show, but Gren was also syndicate and he was he seemed to be trans but like actually going through the transition mm-hmm. at at a certain point the where the where you meet up with them in the show You're and like this the one anime, was just or... like in the anime okay. and then in this one he's they're just kind of like there and kind of stereotypical catty uh is that the bartender at yeah, Anna's? The, okay. the bartender in Anna's yeah so I don't know that was that was a direction they didn't need to go they they kind of seem to make Gren way less interesting. I understand that it was kind of cool to have that character more prevalent, but you know, and Matt Much also was complaining a little bit about like they really didn't need to go so hard on like all the sex and stuff, like because the show didn't need it in the first place, and it certainly doesn't need it now. So, well, I kind of argue with uh, Matt Much on that one because like they got John Cho. That is true. <laughs> if you got John Show, you got to use him. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I mean, like, give us and some shirtless Faye. John shows, and and yeah, and Faye. All right, I don't not know, that the two of those characters had sex because they didn't, but they both not with each other. Yeah, they had sex, just not with each other. Not with got each it. other. I don't know. I've got. I, I, uh, it feels like it was made by a team of people that was divided into two factions. One group of, of the one faction really had a love of the original and took great care to make certain things like like the 
the music, the costumes, the look of the show, the casting, all of that stuff was done really well by this faction of people who really cared about the original. And then there was this other faction that was like, we're going to make a whole bunch of changes if we're going to sell this thing. And <laughs> those people new. were wrong. Yeah. But they were in charge. That 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 makes sense. I do have some small gripes about the music too. Like I felt like they had a checklist of original songs because they just used the original songs. Like they weren't new recordings of them or anything. They were the original songs. Oh, but they weird. used them in all these different places. And I don't know it's just, if it's just because I know the original show so well, but a lot of the songs just seemed like they were there whereas they were so integral to the scenes that they were connected to in the original one, like, the tones of these songs were there, like, to tell a specific part of the story. Whereas in this one, it'd be like, the ship's landing, so we're going to play four, four to five seconds of this one song from the original show. That doesn't really have any context around what's happening, but hey, it seems like it could fit here, so go ahead. Like, it wasn't as thoughtfully, thoughtfully placed as it was in the original show. And that kind of that kind of bugged me. Also, Waltz for Azizi wasn't in it, and that's one of my favorite tracks from the original soundtrack, and it wasn't there. Thumbs down. Was there anything else missing music-wise, or was that like the only thing? Like that like, was the only, the only song track. that yeah. hit me. Uh, like they, uh, you didn't really get to see it because of the nature of Netflix, but they do play real folk blues over the credits. But because Netflix is so like binge heavy. You don't really see it unless you make it play the credits for you. Gotcha. Um, they did some interesting stuff with the opening credits sometimes, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, I still prefer a not having cold opens. Like it doesn't always just start, it doesn't always start with the the opening credit sequence. It'll like they'll do a cold open and then transition into the 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 opening credits, mm-hmm. which. I prefer it the other way, but it was still really interesting this time, and especially in the um, the the Londis episode where they were doing all this weird trippy stuff. Like there were all these crazy visual effects for the dream that Spike was trapped in, and they messed with the music and the intro. And like for the first half of it, Karen and I are sitting there like, music sounds weird. And I was like, oh, I know what episode this is. That's kind of cool. <laughs> cool. So okay. It, it it gets so much right, but I think the bad outweighs the good here. That's and a shame. That is yeah, a shame. I don't... Wow. This show didn't need to be changed to make it um acceptable to non anime fans. Which is like what you just what you just said. Like there was a probably a group of executives that said things need to be this way and then there were other people that we're like, no, we just want to make this show because we love it. And this show, are, the original already transcends its medium. Like, my dad does not like anime, but my dad loves Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> because because it's one of those shows that even if you don't like anime, it's still, it's still very watchable. It transcends the medium, which is great. Um, so the changes that they made to try to make it more acceptable to a common audience were unnecessary because it already did that. And it, that really bugged me. It just really bugged me. And I wish I could, I wish I could recommend this to everybody to watch, but I just can't like the, it does, it doesn't offer enough of anything that makes it worth watching instead of just watching the anime either again or for the first time. Which, have you spoken to anybody that hasn't or that wasn't a fan of the original anime? That has actually like watched the entirety of it? I don't think I know anybody. Do you want me to be a guinea pig? Well, that's the thing. I'm curious as to... So there are reasons that you know those two factions got together to make this show and you know the ones that we don't like are probably geared towards those that haven't watched the show or they're trying to do things to make it more i don't know approachable approachable i guess cuz it I, it's not even that it, it's not not approachable it doesn't have you know hundreds and hundreds of episodes and miles and miles of backstory it's just it's just a great show I'm curious as to how someone who hasn't seen the show or hasn't has no 
knowledge of what Cowboy Bebop is watching this show, how they feel about it. Will the bad things still be as bad as they are? I mean, I can only imagine the stuff that's pissing me off the most, um, like the, 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 because it's different, might not bother people as much, but also, like, I feel like everything involving Vicious and Julia is a, just objectively <laughs> shitty. <laughs> that, and that's, and that's Yeah, what like, I, I, I have seen Cowboy Bebop, the original. I liked it. I don't remember it well. Um, mm-hmm. as I don't have a super great attachment to it, and I couldn't stand those fuckers either. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, That's everything that I've been reading. Interesting. Interesting. They interesting. are universally hated. Seems that way. And also, for some reason, Netflix cannot do white hair. <laughs> or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she mentioned that, and like somebody had said that. And I, I was saw like, it on Twitter somewhere or something. God, because we were we had a whole thing about that with Jupiter's Legacy. Like, <laughs> wow, they Beards really can't white do white hair. They, they but do. they did it just fine for Witcher. But that's that's not is that Netflix? Yes. Uh, yeah, that is. Yeah. New season is coming, honey. I'm fucking waiting. I'm Two so weeks. ready. Oh my god, my body is ready. I for mean, the Henry Cable mm-hmm. kind of like. I think he came he could, with his own gray hair, white hair. Listen, he, he, brought, was... he brought his own wig from home. He was like, look, guys, <laughs> I know how to look good. I, I, in anything. Don't let these hair people touch me. <laughs> yeah. he, <sighs> he just uses his good looks and willpower. Mm-hmm. Well, he willed uh, it to be good. I, I'm trying to look back at what we've watched this week, hun, and we've spoken pretty much about all of it. <laughs> uh, I mean, I have a, a couple things I could touch upon. All right. Sorry, but, uh, I went so long. I had a no. lot of feelings. No. I am so <laughs> glad that you did, though, because I specifically read articles just so I could stir the pot. Like, <laughs> I did. I, I really, I was like, I need to know how they feel about this because I was curious. And also because, like, you know, we just, we have not had a lot of time together lately. So all of these shows are shows that we would really prefer to watch as a couple. And so getting to hear you guys talk about it, it's it's exciting to me. Uh, Because we're, you know, we'll get there. Um, But as far as the stuff that I've been watching, I mean, I can go through it pretty quickly. Uh, Basically, I have a guilty pleasure that I will continue to not apologize entirely for. But I guess for this moment, because you had to walk in and see me watching it the other night, I'm sorry. America's Next Top Model has another season out on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it is currently my, like guilty pleasure but i tried to do a workout while watching it in the background because i was like well it's meaningless and the only scenes i really care about are the ones where they like pose and then get evaluated because that stuff's cool to me and you know it's like how people manipulate their bodies and all this cool stuff right oh my god i can't do it i i had to i got through the workout and i was like angry working out because by the time the episode is done you realize that there's only about 10 minutes of content that you actually fucking want to watch everything else is drama and shit talking and then you'll have people who are like that's not the material that makes america's next top model america's next top model and that is just not someone that you want representing tyra's brand oh my god that's bitch and i'm like what's the fuck like how did you just what was that like oh my god okay so and i like, still don't have a new season of firefly i'm just right? saying that out loud so <laughs> like it's it's so much drama oh my god and i just don't care so i've been doing a lot of fast forwarding through that and i watched about three episodes in an hour <laughs> and they're three minute episodes nice um so yeah sped through that uh also I don't know if we if we ever really talked about it, but I did start watching the show Sex Ed um, or Sex Education. I think it's just Sex Ed on Netflix. Uh, but that <laughs> that show, uh, we, I've, I've actually Evan has watched about as much as I have now. Um, I thought it was interesting, definitely fun. Um, yeah, I watched a couple of episodes. Yeah, I think I was trying to catch up to where you were, and I have not had any interest to watch it again. Yeah, and for, okay, so that's good to know, because then I'll keep going, because, like, Jillian Anderson, she's a goddamn national treasure. Um, yeah, she is. I <laughs> laughed when you mentioned the show, because the other day we went to turn on Dragon Ball for John, and the Apple TV was like, the the 
Pfft, cursor was on Netflix and the first show in the cover image was sex education. And I was like, yes. <laughs> like, awesome. <laughs> like, that is a question I do not want to answer right now. <laughs> not, not a topic of conversation What's I am ready that? to have with my Jillian girl. Anderson. Really? You haven't I mean, just spoken to John could, about Jillian Anderson? Yet? She could teach, man, <laughs> she could teach me anything she wants. Jillian Anderson. <sighs> I'd smoke weed with her and I've never smoked weed before. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that that show is just interesting. Someone had recommended it to me and said it was really well written and, and it was very clever. And so uh, I've enjoyed what I've watched, but I haven't really gone back as much to watch more. Um, I had also started Squid Games and I don't remember, or Squid Game, uh, but I don't know if I ever like talked about it. Um, I had, somebody had said that they had started watching the show and they had to stop after like two episodes because it was too violent. And I was like really because like the first i think i've seen three episodes now and it's like mostly just korean drama like it's just a big drama there's not like yeah the the game happens but like it's not entirely about that like i would say 80 percent of the content has actually been about the characters in the show and like the reasons they're in these situations um in fact, they have the first game and then everyone freaks out and votes and is like, we don't want to do this. We want out. And then they're like, okay, if a majority says it's over, then the game's over and that's it. And so they take a vote of all of these people and the game ends. Like they, they vote for to get out and then they all get out. And like the last that I saw, um, like you see these people go b try to go back to their old lives and the reason that they were chosen to be in these games is because basically every single person is some sort of delinquent or considered to be some sort of degenerate like they've embezzled or they have gambling issues or you know th like th they have some sort of i guess i'm trying to understand it from the way that they seem to choose people but it seemed as if they were they had like moral failings and that's how they were chosen that's just the phrase i was going to use moral failings mm -hmm. yeah, it seems it seems like that was kind of the the net that was cast is like well these are these people and it was actually a situation where like when you die um like they pass prize money on to your relatives after like for anyone who's died, like their family gets comp uh, compensated. So for like some of these people, they leave the game and now they're realizing like, oh fuck, I was worth more to my family dead playing that game than I am alive because I'm just a nuisance to everybody. And it's actually really sad. Um, but like, I did not expect this level of storytelling. Like it just sounded like it was going to be another like, battle royale situation um and it's it so far it's not so we'll see where that goes uh i haven't been able to watch it much because i have to read the subtitles and i haven't had a lot of time to just sit and do that um i don't know if i ever mentioned finishing love on the spectrum but there was another season of that and i i just i really enjoy that show uh, evan can't watch it because he feels uncomfortable because like they have very so love on the spectrum for anyone who doesn't know is for people who have autism they're trying to find love and um because they are somewhere on this autism spectrum uh they like some of them can mask it very well and quote unquote behave normally and some of them cannot at all uh, and so they'll have like these really awkward pauses in conversation. And when you're watching it, like you just, ugh, there's points where I just have my hands like balled up in fists and I'm like, just smile, like just say something you can do. It. And you're just like rooting for these people and you just want to see them succeed because some of them have like never experienced anything like this in their lives. And Evan will walk in the room and be like, nope, I'm out. I can't do this. I can't do this. They ha Everybody has to have a happy ending or I can't do it. Like he can't. It's very hard for him to see them well, I uncomfortable. I am feeling uncomfortable for them. So yeah, that's what it's, and that happens. In, it's not just anybody with autism, or it's like any no, no, no. Show. It's just the like, sitting, like, the situations they're in. Like it's yeah. there's a lot of social awkwardness, and Evan does not handle socially awkward situations, especially when they're like really drawn Actually, out for drama. You know in real life, I handle socially awkward situations quite well. It's when I see it on TV because or in, in movies, real life you just de-escalate or like you you take control of that and then you take away the awkwardness i don't know what we, we and on tv you can't and uh, like i, I know i know i knew that was going to tie into Anyhow, tonight sorry. yeah but that's continue. fine uh and then the last thing that i could think of 
that I've been watching is um, I started watching a show called Forensic Files because I listened to this podcast called And That's Why We Drink. And um, it's one of my favorites. I've mentioned it before, but half of it's paranormal stories. And then the other half is true crime stories. And she, uh, the, the person who does the true crime reporting has referenced the show a few times. Uh, and so I just kind of wanted to give it, um, give it a go, I guess. And it's, I don't know. It's just like, it's like, it's literally exactly what it sounds like, but it's like these stories, it's some sort of true crime story. And, um, then they basically talk about like how they use uh forensic science to do all of these different things to like solve these crimes right like i was i didn't actually finish the um uh the episode in its entirety because evan walked in but <laughs> um pretty much like it's not dramatic in any way shape or form it's more it's just like yeah anything. it's like an informational it's like a they have like reenactments, but it's like not overly dramatized. And it's basically just trying to like tell you the story and then kind of look like, like look at the forensic science that was used. And to me, it's interesting because in some cases, forensic science can be completely misconstrued and misused and is not always as accurate as people believe it to be. Um, and so like, I, I just want to see how it's applied to these cases and, and, you know where it's a hindrance and where it's not but that's pretty much it um i do have one or two yeah i'm trying to think quickly <laughs> as far as the story. stuff i've talked about solo uh so yeah your, your turn um i mean we're still watching fixer to fabulous i think we've caught up on the new sadly yes <sighs> New and property brothers show. is weird oh they were on they were on america's next top model uh, that doesn't surprise me they at all. decorated the house death. that the models are staying in um <laughs> yep the we'll unexplained circle. with mr shatner always a favorite in, of mine um but the big catch for me this week or yeah i think it was this week was this um special? no what dan brown no oh. i'm not talking about that till later uh Fine. Dan Brown's the, this is the show that I wanted to watch. Mm -hmm. Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol, which Dan Brown is one of my favorite authors. He did The Da Vinci Code and, and a, a number of mystery solving novels. And this show is the one that is based in Washington, D.C. That the, the book is based in Washington, D.C. Um, I was a big fan of not only his books, but when they the, the Dan Brown movies came out featuring Tom Hanks uh, playing the part of Robert Langdon. Um, I was like, this is, he's doing a great job, but it's, it's, you know, it's Tom Hanks. He doesn't do a bad job in pretty much anything. So we started watching this show and it's true to the books. And when I watch this guy play Robert Langdon, it's how my, as I was reading the book, the voice that's how I heard it, or that's how I felt it. It wasn't Tom Hanks. It was this guy, and he's doing a, like a really, really good job of bringing me along, someone that is a fan of the, his writings. Um, we're, we're three or four episodes in right now, and I'm hooked. I just want more time to actually sit down and watch it. Um, and that came, like, I found that, like, on a lark. I can't even, it just popped up in, into one of my feeds. Um, and it's, it was funny because I was trying to explain to, to Angela how in the movies, there are certain traits that Langdon has that like he has an eidetic memory and he's you know, claustrophobic and they did certain things in the movies to relay that visually. Um, in this show, when they show him dealing with claustrophobia, it's, it's like, it's as if it's really happening. Like, it's true. Like I know those feelings cause I have claustrophobia. And when I like, when I see it, it's not the situation that he's in. It's his reaction, which shows how good of an actor this dude is. And I've never seen him before. Like he came for like, it was like I said, out of nowhere. His name is Ashley Zuckerman. 
I got nothing. Nothing. Like Eddie, the only recognizable face in this show is Eddie Izzard, and he plays a guy named Peter. Um, Peter is kidnapped, and the whole point of the story is to find this portal that leads to great knowledge. Great knowledge, and it's real cryptic like that. And like, there's this I call him Malik. I think I can't really, like they keep mispronouncing his name for me. Um, but he's like the big bad and they're doing a great job with him. And um Rick Gonzalez, who is a uh, uh, um, <laughs> Mad, uh, Wild Dog. Wild Dog from the Arrow series. He's like the, the buddy in the show. Like it's it if you like the writings and the books by by uh Dan, this is this this is great. Like it's really, really, really spot on. What is uh, it called again? Uh this one's called Dan Brown's The Lost Symbol. Okay. It's like it was like midway through his the the Langdon series because Angels and Demons, The Da Vinci Code, uh, Inferno, like it's like I think seven books or so of his that are all dealing with symbology and and riddle solving. It's it's like right up my alley. I like I really enjoy it and the show is great. Um, the male lead, by the way, Karen, uh, I feel like when you look at him, if you just picture him in a discovery of witches, like he should, he could have been the lead <laughs> and it, it may, it may have had more emotion. <laughs> it probably would have been better, but he could have definitely taken that role and had a chin. Okay, okay. But yeah. Sorry um, we also, and I want to talk more about this next episode cause I feel like we'll, we'll, it's more related to that. <sighs> Um, Zoe's extraordinary playlist uh, technically is a two episode length, but it was the Christmas episode, and it was. Can we save it for the next yes. p- episode? Because yeah. that's what I should have watched instead of. No, 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 no! It's not what you should have. It. It's yeah. I uh, just wanted to say that we watched it, and it was it was it, it was. No, I mean I yeah. I was sitting there last night stitching and like what am i gonna watch and um <laughs> i couldn't i couldn't think of anything and i was like all right christmas baking show it is and then this morning i opened up the tv to do something else and i was like oh fuck zoe's thing i should have watched that <laughs> Son of a- <laughs> so and- it's not out of obligation to you it's because okay. i want to see it and i had time and i didn't because okay. i forgot Fair. it was there Fair. Fair. you Fair. fucked up um i will finally uh, my last bit of information to give out this evening i unfortunately for me found the show that i downloaded <laughs> for angela that <laughs> i now feel that i'm going to if i get more episodes it's going to be on my television far too often um this is a game show and this game show is called <clears throat> harry potter hogwarts tournament of houses yeah hosted by helen mirren dame yeah. helen mirren um, I tried watching this. I mean, Angie was in hog heaven while watching it. I Hogwarts tried, heaven. <laughs> I tried watching it and I sat there and I go, this is like Jeopardy for everybody who knows all of the answers. It doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. Like to get super fans and talk about game show wise, the thing that they are super fanatic about. Okay. But it was cute. For those that like Harry Potter, I'm going to assume <laughs> it's enjoyable because it's just clips from the movies and questions. Oh, um, well, I'll be honest. It is a little bit silly because like some of it is they play a scene from a movie and then you. <laughs> that was great. You have to notice something. So one of the clips they play is uh, when Lupin is trying to help Harry with his uh patronus and and he like summons uh the it look it looks like a dementor but it's the thing that takes on the shape of your fear and um they like pan in that scene and then there's like candles and the candles have roman numerals on them for some reason and as the camera panned by it i was like oh that's weird like why are there roman numerals on there and then i shit you not i haven't seen this show 
The question was, in this scene, what were the numbers of the Roman numerals on the candles? And Evan was like, are you fucking kidding me right now? So, so the, <laughs> now, if they had not shown the scene and they went in this Harry Potter during this scene, there are candles that have Roman numerals in them. What are those Roman numerals? That's a solid question. Mm -hmm. Not they. It literally panned, and at one point in time, the full screen is taken up by this candle. It wasn't hidden. It wasn't in the background. Like the 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 big tall woman walks into the room mm -hmm. was the other visual question. Yeah, and she's a giant. She bumps into the chandelier. It was overt. It wasn't like subtle. And they're like, "Hey, what did she bump into?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, so some of it is silliness like one of the things i love is the set for the show uh that was the thing that got me most excited um there's a couple things that they did that i was like oh that's this and you know like they there were references to things that i got so it was like oh that's so cool um and some of it's fun because they're doing trivia stuff and then you're just supposed like some of it is just actual trivia um and i haven't read the books i've actually never seen all of the movies um so that was the first thing. And then the second thing is that I haven't reread the books in a few years now. So it's not fresh in my mind anymore. And it, this is just making me want to do a re-listen to the audiobooks because Stephen Fry should narrate my life forever. Um, and I'm just uh, like, this just made me so ready. I was like, yes. Oh, give I will me give them props on how they chose the contestants for the episode. So um, it's, it's, the studio audience is split into two houses. I don't even remember which. Per episode, it was Hufflepuff versus Gryffindor. There you go. So half of it is Gryffindor, half of it is Hufflepuff. And Dame Helen Mirren is standing on out front. And they choose almost Price is Right style from the audience. But instead of calling someone up front, out of the fireplace yeah they did the, the owl it the was a reference mail. to the owl mail move uh in the <laughs> and it just floods the stage and yeah she adorably is trying to catch it in air like oh, it's, it's so not cute. Well, it's not i know these people have chosen because they have to get the backstory for them beforehand so it was cute um it was a very nice nod to the to the movies and and, and then know. after they've been chosen they go out of the studio and then they come back in and they're all wearing like the uh house colors like they have sweaters on and it's all matching mm -hmm. and when they come out they come out the chim out of the chimney and it looks like they came out of flu powder like it glows green like the when they do the flu powder effect and like so they just those were the two things i was referring to i was trying not to ramble on but those were <laughs> Those were the things that they were doing, and I was just like, "Oh, oh my god!" Um, so, and the the, the 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 contestants ranged anywhere from fifteen, I think, was the youngest girl. Yeah. To the older guy was in his seventies. Seventies, early seventies was the guy. Seventy four, I think. So, mm -hmm. it's a, if you are a Harry Potter fan, I'm just assuming you'll enjoy it, <laughs> or just you know, <laughs> get drunk, right. make yeah. it a drinking game. It was fun. You guys have seen the thing about that scene in Harry Potter where the letters come out of the fireplace, how it proves that Harry was correct to be sorted into Gryffindor? No. None of those words made any sense to me. I got it. Don't worry. Okay. Okay, wait, but I haven't seen that thing. No. Why? What? <laughs> well, <laughs> he's like, you know, the letters start shooting out of the fireplace and like flying all over the room and Harry jumps up on the coffee table and starts trying to grab one out of the air, which proves that he's a Gryffindor and not yeah. a Ravenclaw because, because he, he didn't just, just pick one off yeah. the ground. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yep. That makes sense. That absolutely makes sense. Yep. They're not wrong. So, Fuck you all. Uh, I'm a Gryffindor. <laughs> Think. I'm a Hufflepuff. That makes sense too. I think Evan would be a Hufflepuff, but he won't take the test. <laughs> Get so that's sorted. It. That's it. I think we're good. All right. Let's take our break. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, listen, who's the host here? We're taking a break. Okay. There. Now it's official. Oh. We'll be back. And now, here's a quick look at some of the other original content available now from our partners and geekade.com. First up, on an all-new Stone Age countdown, Chris spent some time revisiting one of his favorite topics, hidden game li lineages. Wow, that's a word I can say. <laughs> it's always quite a thrill to discover that a game you love is actually part of a series. 
or some sort of cult favorite got itself a sequel you've never heard of, so he assembled a list of his favorite examples that he's discovered. Uh, so why don't you just head on over to Stone Age Gamer YouTube channel and check out the Stone Age Countdown Top 5 Secret Sequels. Nice alliteration. Mm-hmm. Next Thank up, you. conventions. We all miss them. But they've been slowly making their way back into the world. And the legendary Midwest, nope, yes, the legendary Midwest <laughs> Gaming Classic, I wanted to say Midway Gaming Classic, but it's not Midway, it's Midwest Gaming Classic is among them. This week, the Weekend Rental Crew recounts their trip to this gaming mecca in Milwaukee, okay, and Don't discusses all the wonderful and exciting things they saw there. How did it go? Find out in Weekend Rental Episode 113, The Gamers Revisit a Classic. Finally, what's better than Pocky? Pocky and Rocky! On a new episode of the SNES podcast, Greg and Joe were joined by guest Alex to talk about one of his favorite shooters on the platform, Pocky and Rocky. This obscure Nastume game, licensed from Taito, allows you to play the role of either Shrine Maiden Pocky or Squirrel Rocky as you blast through the six stages a la Commando or Ikari Warriors to stop an evil force. Don't miss the SNES podcast number 177, Pocky and Rocky. Don't say I, re- I don't do anything for you, Evan, because Thank I you. didn't I make you pronounce completely. Natsume and Taito. Yeah, I was surprised. <laughs> Almost disappointed. I thought I'd be nice today. Anyway, for all this great content and more from our partners, keep your eyes on Geekade.com. Giggity. All right, we are back. So uh, we've done a lot of talking about television, and now we're going to do just a little more. Uh, This week, we watched the show The Norseman, uh, season one, episode one, The Homecoming. Um, If you are in another country for some reason, you may have heard of this referred to as a Viking game, I guess. I don't know. I'm not Norwegian, so I can't pronounce these things. Um, (laughs) But that's the show's original title. Uh, It is a Norwegian sitcom, essentially, uh, about Vikings, um, you know, being Vikings. (laughs) I I just I'm scrolling through like the IMDb and in this storyline. Oh, God. I don't know who's right. Who A.T. is, but it says set in 790 A.D. Viking gang, Viking gang, because it's one word. Viking gang. Viking gang features the daily challenges of people living in a small Viking village, from power struggles, brotherly rivalry, gender equality, and to betrayal and friendship. It's a story of people from our time, but living, <laughs> but living during the Viking era. Of course, everyday choices have a far more dramatic consequences, and that's what makes a for great comedy material. Yeah, so, I okay, that that works as the description then. Cool. Um, So, yeah, basically, I want to know what you guys think of this. Uh, I'll give a quick descriptor slash recap of the episode for anyone who has not seen it or does not want to see it. Um, We start with uh, some wonderful men standing atop a cliff uh, next to a beautiful waterfall. Uh, being encouraged to uh, participate in Etherstoop, which is um, basically sacrificing oneself to not be a burden to the younger generations. Uh, So that's great. Uh, Essentially, one out of, like, I don't know, seven old dudes is like, yeah, I'll do it to Valhalla. And then he, uh, you know, jumps off the cliff and everyone else is like, yeah, no, that looked terrible. We're not doing this. Uh, then we bounce back to a boat full of Vikings that are returning from some sort of raid, and we're introduced to some of the cast. Uh, they have some slaves with them, one of whom does not realize he's a slave. Uh, then it cuts to the interim chieftain. He's pretty who is, upset about it, too. <laughs> yeah, he's, like, not happy. He is not having it. Uh, except for when he does, because we'll get to the um, 
<laughs> we'll get to that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so then we meet the interim chieftain, who is the chieftain's brother. Uh, and he is kind of having a back and forth with the chieftain's wife, who's like, hey, we need to make sacrifices because it's been like an extra month and the dude still didn't come back and you haven't done anything and people are starving. And he's like, meh. And she's like, no, I'm going to go do it. She makes a couple sacrifices and all of a sudden everybody returns home casually discussing raids and rape no big deal uh then they cut to the slave quarters where our not thrilled slave discovers that he is a slave and then is force-fed human waste it was absolutely grotesque so you don't like dirt uh, yeah Open your mouth Ugh, it was so terrible uh moving past that well, there's a feast because you know you have to celebrate the return of uh the looting and pillaging and raiding and yay um and we learned what an assicle is or isn't uh and then there's a know. challenge <laughs> a challenge issued where uh one of the main characters uh challenges uh one of the other characters to uh a thing called Holmgang, which is basically fighting for someone's uh, right to their lands and their wife. Um, and it's <laughs> great. Um, then there is a pre-fight uh, scene where basically uh, we see the the one can, uh, character uh, like practicing and he just cleaves what was it a goat or like pig. a pig a pig a yeah some, you know just some sort of carcass yeah mm -hmm. it was wonderful um cleaved in just twain. just right right through the nethers <laughs> right through right to, you know anyway so cuts right through that bad boy uh and then you see the other guy going like Ugh, yeah i don't think i'm gonna win this so i think i'm gonna go get some poison and i'm gonna dip my blade in poison uh which you know doesn't go great for him because as soon as the home gung fight begins the dude gets cleaved in half and the poison ends up being absolutely nothing and useless and it was a weird funny throwaway scene um and then there's uh some really awkward kissing and this uh guy who just won home gung walks away with the dude's wife and that's the end of the episode so there you go. I think that was a pretty solid recap. And uh, Chris and Karen, what'd you guys think? So we went into this blind, uh, yeah. not knowing anything about it. As um, did we. And I think, I think I had a like association that, or like something in my head that this show either was the show Vikings or was like the show Vikings, <laughs> which I haven't seen, but to my but to my understanding is like a serious show about Vikings. It is like not it's dramatic is and dark serious. and bloody. Yes, and so like that. this show started and uh, was funny immediately, and we were like, oh, okay. <laughs> so because uh, I was is. not excited to watch something dark and um, gritty about brutal Viking life. But right. this wasn't that. This was great. Oh, oh, good. you liked it. Okay. Nice. Yes. Awesome. Yes. I was very pleasantly surprised. Um, the humor's right up uh, my alley. Um, I think the modern sensibilities of the characters co in contrast to the like <laughs> pr fairly primitive lifestyle of the, you know, the, where the show is set uh, makes for really excellent comedy like i the guy that the slave that led the old men up to the, <laughs> to the cliff to jump and then he's like like this is what you're supposed to do and i don't know i'm just a slave like i can't make you do it <laughs> my first <laughs> quote option came from that he's like, he's like well you don't want to be a burden to your family he's like I'm 47. Yeah. <laughs> and everyone there looks like old. they're at least 60. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. I thought all of it was pretty fun. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I also uh, rather enjoyed it. It was, um, I mean, I, I enjoyed it to the extent that I told my dad about it today. Wow. Um, wow. I recommend, this... I recommend it to him too. And this was particularly funny because, um, so I told him about it, and and he was like, "Oh, because I was just finished watching a a, 
a thing on Vikings. Like I, I, I like watching the documentaries and stuff. It's like, oh, well, this is a comedy. Like, oh, <laughs> well, okay. This is not that. Well, so we, uh, so he, he loads it up, and uh, Netflix says that he had watched the first episode, or at least some of the first episode, and he was like, oh, I feel like I, I watched the the first episode of this, and and it didn't really make any sense to me because uh, you know, d- 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 Viking documentaries and stuff. But now you're saying it's a comedy, so I'm like, yeah, Dad, this was supposed to be funny, and um, <laughs> for I, I think he tried watching it once, thinking it was going to be a documentary, and like it just didn't connect to him because it was not realistic at all. <laughs> so I, I I'm really not sure what grace. happened there. <laughs> he didn't it definitely didn't make it through the whole episode. Um, uh, so we uh, I I. I you know, recommended the show to him. Was like pointed it out to him. Was like, look, I've only seen the first episode. I thought it was pretty funny. I can't say for sure that it's gonna stay that funny, but uh, you know, at least this struck me as a pretty amusing thing. Uh, so why not give it a try? And then Netflix auto played the the first uh like uh, auto played the second episode. Mm-hmm. And uh, did you guys watch past the first episode? At we all? did watch yeah. the second episode. Yeah, that thing that happened right in the very beginning. Uh, where oh uh, he's having the dream God. with his mouth open <sighs> and then he wakes up <laughs> my dad and I both just started cracking up hysterically and my dad's like yeah yeah I'm gonna watch this one this, this, <laughs> this, is, this is right up my alley it's perfect <laughs> see this wow. amazes me because Evan and I when we saw that scene looked at each other in horror Evan covered his face he because, literally like, held a blanket it, over his face like a child it was it's that awkward shit that makes me uncomfortable but oh he was so like, uncomfortable it's a, oh. it's a, I don't want to say yeah it, it's a dry sense of humor like it's a dry comedy but this it's comedy not, pushes it's not what i expected like yeah i knew this was, i knew going into this that it was supposed to be a comedy and i thought it was supposed to be like an overt comedy like like laugh out loud haha funny situ- and it wasn't it's like airplane with vikings <laughs> sort of yes because it, it looks like it's trying to take itself super seriously and yet they do ridiculous things like make a guy shove a finger up his ass and then throw it into another guy's mouth like that's <laughs> not <laughs> right <laughs> that was so disgusting <laughs> Because he so, just put it, he's like rubbing his gums with it. But he has, a, he has an axe to his throat and he says to him, don't bite. Yeah. Like it was like that. That was someone taking that part seriously. Vomitous. Vomitous. Like, and it's so funny because listening to you laugh at that, like we, I was like, like I was laughing. I would laugh out loud at certain scenes and we got to that one and I immediately stopped laughing. I was like, I can't even like this show, like in my notes that I was taking when I was watching this, all I could put was very odd and pushes boundaries on all of my humor. Like it would just like, I said to Evan, it basically just took the line, crumpled it up and then threw it away because like right out the gate, it was like, Oh, uh, talking about like, rape casually and collecting uh penises and and stuff Wait, yeah, yeah no the big dick deal necklace was really something not only yeah. like i mean that's what viking vikings do they rape yeah. and pillage so like i love i thought it was genuinely funny that they talked about it like just like a it was matter nothing. of business like yeah. that, look look it's this is my job this is what i have to do yeah. yep <laughs> I, I gotta meet. I gotta meet my quarter. To <laughs> like you monks. said, um, <laughs> airplane, but with Vikings. But it feels m- like not that that's an accurate description of the show, nor was that what you were trying to say. But I feel like it's more like it's The Office with Vikings. That's <laughs> okay. that is really kind of what this felt like, like The Office with Vikings. And so this show has I mean been uh, compared that, like I at the end of watching this, I needed to know how well received it was because it unfortunately only had eighteen episodes and it's no longer in production. Um, oh, it's over. That's a bummer. Yeah, three seasons. Um, it had three seasons, uh, six episodes oh, each, yeah. and uh, it would it won like a lot of awards when it was first. It, so, in Nor- a fifth of the Norwegian population was watching it the first season when it came out. Is that uh, like fifty people? Yeah, <laughs> and it it was over a million viewers in Norway, which uh, has about five million people. Um. And that. the Guardian had actually said that the show, uh, they described it as a cross between Monty Python and Game of Thrones. 
Okay. Um, which I could to see that me, too. yeah, I, I was like, yeah, I could definitely, I could definitely see some of that. Um, and it's just funny because like this humor. So I, I have a Norwegian friend and I, sometimes he would make jokes and I'll just be like, did you just hear yourself right now? Like, what are you like? Did, do you not realize how far you just took that? Like, and he's always, he's, this is his humor, like to a T. And I've come to realize this is just a cultural thing. Like, I think this is just the the thing that, like, this is his humor. Like, this is, this is how, how a lot of Norwegians are. And I was like, holy shit, what a revelation. This person makes so much more sense to me after watching this show. I was wondering about that, whether like certain things in this show were like, specific to Norwegian culture like mm-hmm. it would have been received as even funnier in Norway because it was made by Norwegian people mm-hmm. for Norwegian people mm-hmm. who would you know put certain things in that they would find especially funny like I don't like the way that the the one sl- I keep going back to that one slave guy that I think may- <laughs> might have been my favorite character but like <laughs> the way he was like trying to argue about being being beheaded <laughs> oh my like, god but he was yeah. really polite about it and he's like look i don't want to argue with you <laughs> i just like i'm just trying to point out like that you know uh, reasons that over-eager. for you <laughs> that it might be a good idea for you to not do this not not because of me I th- that I like struck me as very monty the box, and i appreciate that but you don't want the gods to think you're trying too hard <laughs> So I'm looking at the IMDb and some Kark of the, is the is the one you're talking about. Okay. All scenes were first shot with Norwegian dialogue, <laughs> then in English. So they filmed every scene twice, once in Norwegian and once in English. That's so cool. Huh. Neat. Yeah, neat. Yeah, I just and I can't like I want to tell people who the cast is. I can't just look yeah, it up. No, that's... I I looked up. One per the woman who plays Freya, just because like she was cool. I She's looked up really good looking. <laughs> yeah, I looked up her, and her name is spelled S I L J E. Would anyone like to take take a guess at that pronunciation? Frank. <laughs> I was yes. gonna say Silja. Silje. 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 Yeah. Close. Torp. So Silja Torp. Uh, yeah. So I had to Google the pronunciation of her name, and after that, I was like, "I'm good." So in, in the second episode, when they're they're hunting down the other um, <laughs> slave, and they find him at that other camp, Rufus, I believe his name was sure. the Roman, the, yeah, the actor, the and yeah. they see him doing his magic act, and they they can confront the rest of the group. And she's just standing there over the other woman, and all of a sudden she just straight up headbutts her square in the face. That was so great. Takes her out, and he's like, "Whoa, whoa, I, I think we got this." And she's like, "Have you ever had heard of a man that has too much control?" He's like, "No." We go, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Spot on. All right. Good. Oh, good on you. So good. Yeah. It's, I, it's not. It. <laughs> It wasn't what I expected. Um, I'm going to be honest. The second watch, I enjoyed it more. The first watch, I was just, I don't know. I was too shocked, I guess, that I did not enjoy it. I actually said to you, I swing and a miss for me. Mm -hmm. But the second time around, I enjoyed it more. Mm -hmm. Um, You just have to be prepared. It It is foreign comedy, which I've not. Like foreign I, I like, to me comedy. I, well, like the, the, the <laughs> furthest I go is like European comedy. That's a very distinct form of comedy. Um, I've never like comedy is very subjective, and a lot of this ends up being borderline uncomfortable, which you know was never you know for me. Mm-hmm. But a lot of it is outright like like thought provokingly funny. Where he's sitting there arguing for him not to be beheaded, yeah. you know, like. <laughs> really laying it out there trying his debt but not being too overt about it so it is it's it 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 got better the second time around for me i also agree that kark was pretty great by the way just the fact that he's like oh yeah i was freed and then oh my god (laughs) the old guy in the freaking second episode (laughs) so which one 
when he's like, oh, look at those two things flying at us. What are the, <laughs> like the setup for that? They were two They arrows. look like two sharp objects flying in this direction. Well, he, and then you just he, hear him screaming. He came up with like 900 different words for looking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. yeah. Interesting pick, honey. Thanks. I'm so surprised that everybody liked this. I was definitely not sure how this was going to land. Ah. Uh. Yeah, I yeah. feel like this could be peppered into our other viewing when we just have a little bit of time and want to watch something. That's yeah, so I'm not exciting. Like, I'm itching like crazy. Like I'm not like I gotta watch the rest of this. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I would, you know, I wouldn't say no to watching more of it. I'm, I'm, I'm curious about it. It was, it was fun. It was funny. Not everything landed with me, but more than enough did, and I liked the the general concept. And uh, it was, it was a good, it was a good, good time. That's a good way to spend my lunch break. Awesome. Nice. Yay. Good pick. Um, and fun fact that I did want to share, because um, I did try to look up like some of the relevant information, um, but the ether stoop is apparently a, a myth. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, that's not like a real thing. Um, it's usually uh, like there's a whole thing. Actually, it's on the IMDb page here. It says... Um, the original source of the story is a 13th century Icelandic account um, and supposed that in Norway and Scandinavia uh, they had they were, they had been proven to have been only referred to as such by 18th and 19th century historians with no prior references. That's that thing where the, the old uh, people jump off the cliff? Is that yeah. what that's called? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, most serious historians consider the story a reflection of, because it refers to the Gautr Gatrix saga. I don't know what that is. <laughs> I cannot pronounce it properly. Um, but basically, most people say that it's a, a reflection of Icelandic medieval tradition of depicting Swedes as barbarous on account of them converting to Christianity a century later than Iceland. So, you know. There you go. If you want to talk shit, that's that's how you do it. Oh, they throw all their old people off cliffs. Um, and what's interesting is that uh, to horrify people, this was also uh, recently, this practice was used in a film that we had watched and absolutely hated. Do you remember that? Yeah, Midsummer? Midsummer. Yeah. So uh, that was. Midsummer. Well, the spelling would be, yes, but it was, it was called Midsummer. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. But it, it's fun. I like the random sprinkling of, of terminology that they throw within the, the show and then explain it to us because they know we're fucking idiots. Um, well, I mean, it is most of it. The most, the most of that sprinkling was in another language. So yeah, well, th there's just yeah, it's just the way that they do it. They're like, oh, it's this, and then you know, because blah 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 blah. And I'm like, yeah, that's that's <laughs> like nine percent attitude. Yeah, you can. <laughs> it's so great. You know, if you raise your performance five percent and he decreases his five percent, you know, the, the guaranteed win. <laughs> like, yeah, that's it. All right, good luck. It's so Going weird. with some old friends. <sighs> All right. Do you have the door open or closed? <laughs> Good call, uh, honey. Good job. I'm glad you guys yeah. liked it. I also it. enjoyed listening to their accents. Oh my god, I yes. Said, I love a good accent and th this was, you know, clearly authentic. It was, oh, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. legitimate mm -hmm. Norwegian people in the show. So it was fun to listen to. I like listening to um, you know, accents being spoken by the people who actually have them. Yeah, as right. opposed to people who like get trained to do them and don't always do a great job. Authentically sexy accents. <laughs> Oy. On that nice. note, I my work here is done. I have pleased the people. I'm curious to know if listeners liked this or hated it, and I'm sorry for making you watch someone shove shit in someone else's mouth, um, but not sorry at the same time. So, Chris, what are we watching next? <laughs> Uh well, well he's got the uh, spiel, honey. Oh yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Chris. Give us, give us a social media spiel, and then that we can. That sounds like fun. Yeah, this week's it? episode is not filmed before a live studio audience, but it is fueled by feedback from listeners like you, and you can get in touch with us in a multitude of ways. We have an official Geek Aid Discord where there's an entire this week's episode channel dedicated to all things TV talk. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram through the official Geekade channels or the more specific Twepcast accounts. And of course, the four of us can be found in various ways. I'm available on Twitter at Geekade Chris, and you can read my work at StoneAgeGamer.com and in the pages of Nintendo Force Magazine. 
Karen, where can people find you? You can find me at STM Stitches on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Etsy, and TikTok. And G, where can people find you? Nice recovery there. Uh, you can find me at my website, AngelaFernot.com. Newly launched and um, adding new work to the shop. It's great. And totally awesome. And buy <laughs> your you. holiday gifts from her. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to be running another sale. Oh, wait, this is great timing. Oh, quick shilling. Uh, I'm I'm running a sale uh, for Christmas starting. Uh, I'm going to put it out with this episode so people will get this discount through you guys uh and it's just going to automatically be on the site so you don't even need a special code nice um you can also buy holiday things from my etsy shop do it i bought two christmas presents already That's and true. i'm currently working on one of them don't buy too many things from her i'm afraid her hands will fall off <laughs> that is true my hands That's are fair. like what are you doing woman and i'm like shut up it's december <laughs> <laughs> make mama that money you're popular <laughs> Anyways, Evan, where can people find you? TK underscore Evan. If you need more, inf- just just Google that. You're just good. Google that, you'll if fine. you need to know more information about the shows we discussed tonight or what we'll be watching in the future, have a look at our show notes. If you have any other questions at all, we can always be reached at malandkeycade.com. Just include the words this week's episode in the subject line so we know who you're trying to reach. This show is available anywhere fine podcasts are sold, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and more. And wherever you decide to listen, please like, comment, subscribe, and leave reviews because any and all feedback is welcome and appreciated. Again, as always, keep your eyes on Geekade for more fresh original content. Back to you, Angie. All right, Chris, back to you to tell us what we're watching. Okay, um, I feel like there should have been there should be something else uh, for me to pick, but uh, it's it's on my mind right now, and I am going to choose it. And it's not my favorite episode of the series, uh-huh. but I do think it is a uh, has a link to uh, the kind of stuff that we were talking about earlier today. So I did a little looking, and we watched Cowboy Bebop Speak Like a Child, Season 1, Episode 18, way back in June of 2017. Oof. What was, what was the episode, like, what episode was that for us, you know? That was my favorite episode. It was the... Uh, no, no. What no, episode, no, no, like, what episode of... Yeah. That was 87. Wow. Long time ago. Yeah. Galaxy. Fox. On this week's episode of this week's episode, Chris picks the wrong episode of Cowboy Bebop. I really wish I knew which one the right one was. Like, clearly I was trying to pick a different episode and I, I didn't. Uh, even though it's his favorite. Plus, the Dragon Ball Super 60 Second Summary finally makes it to the tournament. Rocco's Modern Life gets voiced. Dean Cain wants to be Superman again. And more. So, hey, that's what that was about. Oh, the Uh, times. But anyway, I am going to choose uh, Cowboy Bebop, Jupiter Jazz, Parts 1 and 2. So it's uh, a two-episode bit. Um, And I'm picking these because these are uh, the first real episodes you get to see um, the stuff about Vicious and Julia and the Syndicate. And this is these are the episodes that have Gren in it, and uh, I this is I always felt like a lot of this stuff was the weakest parts of the original Cowboy Bebop, and this is the part that I really want to kind of remind myself of. So mm-hmm. I am picking these two episodes, and by all means, Angie, you said you wanted to be a guinea pig. I'd love to hear your take on the the live action show if you really want to watch it. Go nuts! I'm curious. Uh, yeah. So not wait. curious enough to say absolutely you must watch. Wait, 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 so we're watching Cowboy Bebop, the original animated series, and which episode? Like Jupiter Jazz is what? Uh, what episodes? You know? Oh, okay. I... not, a, not, not a big deal. I can find them, but I will put them in the notes. Um. So uh, and side question: Are we going to do the thing we discussed for next week? Did we discuss something for next week? It's episodes 12 and 13. Okay, cool. Um, well, the next episode we I record... I have no recollection of anything ever. <laughs> okay. So the next episode that we record, we are very close to Christmas. So oh, oh, oh. I figured that we could just talk about our favorite Christmas episodes of shows. We don't have to watch them. It's just something that we bring up so that we can quickly chat about them for ourselves. 
Um, also, maybe do a little in-depth dive for um, Zoe's playlist, because by that time, I hope you guys have watched it. Yes, I it's... definitely will have watched it by then. Um, I'm already mad that I didn't already do it. And Good. I want to put uh, in the show notes, I don't think we actually have, do we have a link for our Discord? I'm going to put a link to our Discord chat um, in the show notes so that we can get some other uh, suggestions and recommendations from our group about Christmas episodes. There are so, yeah. every show has a Christmas episode, most of which are not good. Guys, I grew up living under a rock. Teach me so, things about television and pop culture. We'll, we'll add that to the, to the show notes so that you guys can, can chat with us because there have been some solid conversations. Um, oddly, I saw like seven or eight messages about my Supreme dislike for certain <laughs> actresses. Yep. <laughs> oh, was I wasn't going to say anything. So I but... uh, just, yeah, I wanted to just throw that out there. Please check out our discord and, and join in the, the conversation. And Evan's not a monster. I am a monster. Okay. But that's what I like about you. <laughs> anyway. All right. That's it. Okay. We're going to, we're going to end this. We're going to end this. Real good. So let's see. I can do this. All right. From all of us here at this week's episode, I'm Angie. I'm, I'm Evan. Karen. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I knew it. I had to take the beat. I'm Evan. I'm Karen. Sleep is where I'm a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> good night. <laughs> and this concludes our broadcast day.